Good morning all, good morning. This is George uh, and I am with you this morning for um, a short while. We're going to be just uh, considering what the situation currently is following um, the possibility that there are going to be some interest rate rises uh, in the States. Now, we're looking at Forex Factory at the moment and I've rolled it forward to uh, next Wednesday, so it's in, uh, what, is that nine days time? I think it is nine days time. And in nine days time, we've got the usual, this is set on UK time, uh, what, GMT time, at an hour for in Europe. And, um, obviously take five off if you're um, Eastern Standard Time. FOMC economic projections, the statement, the federal funds rate. Now, what we've had over, it seems almost going back to all of 2015, well, if not all of 2015, but certainly the, um, the second couple of quarters, what we've actually seen is that um, it's been not the federal funds rate that's been important, but it's been the statement that has come out. And we've heard so much from Janet Yellen uh, talking about liftoff, talking about the pop prospect of interest rate rises. It was going to be in June, it's going to be July, August. Um, they said, no, 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 we're not going to even talk in, in, in August. And then it was going to be, yeah, well, it's got to be September, and it didn't happen. So the market is now, it's... It, the whole business, it's been rather like crying wolf, where, you know, you get people sort of saying so much about it that it's all going to happen and it doesn't actually happen. And it all becomes a big yawn. And consequently, then people start to think, well, <laughs> can we can we believe a word that's coming out of the Fed? And I think we're we're, we're sort of more or less at that stage now where we've become so, so skeptical about what is going on. We've. Also just had the non-farm payroll figures. In fact, the last uh, couple of uh, payroll figures have been really supporting the theory that there is going to be um, an interest rate increase. And, of course, there are a lot of other people who are saying that, well, look, hold on a minute, the real economy, what's it doing? It's uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're adding what are these jobs and um you know, the suggestion is that these jobs are really illusory jobs, that they're just um, sort of zero hours contract jobs where somebody might get a couple of hours work in a week or they might not. And so, you know, the whole the whole uh, economic scene at the moment is very, very muddy indeed. And what is clear um, uh, to to to. Uh, what the Fed seem to think is most unclear, I think, to the rest of us. So this is the big one. The market has bigged this one up, and there seems to be a consensus out there that there will be there will be a quarter percent rise. That seems to be the consensus, and um, uh, various sort of uh, bond numbers and so on seem to be supporting that fact that the market has now discounted at least a quarter of a percent on the upside. So what we've also got to be a little bit wary of is, is the fact that last week we had Mario speaking to us, and of course that caused mayhem in the market when the market had discounted an awful lot more than what he was going to come up with, and consequently we had this massive, massive move where the euro, which was very, very, very heavily oversold. And in fact, if I bring back, let's find, where are we? Is this the one I want? It is. It's the COT report. We just consider the euro USD commitment to traders report for leveraged funds. These are the this is the category which is the most interesting one because it's the frightened money, or at least it becomes frightened when things start to uh, start to go a little bit awry. And this shows, look at the date of the bottom of, the, of this last histogram. The date on there is the 1st of December. Now, this always does run um, a little way behind. So this is for 
the week prior to the Mario Draghi uh, situation. And what we can see is that the, the yellow or the orange that you can see, these are the number of shorts in the market. And the number of shorts had been increasing, 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 increasing dramatically. The number of longs was remaining you know, re relatively stable. But there was a massive futures-driven short position in the market. And that was the expectation. That was the expectation that, yeah, you know, Mario is going to deliver. He's going to deliver the big bazooka. And uh, what it actually ended up with, uh, one commentator said he actually came out with a water pistol <laughs> and said, surprise, surprise, there's nothing in my package here. Well, he, he came up with all the standard stuff saying that, yeah, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that and so on. But what the market expected was a big, big, big increase in the amount of European QE and um, didn't get it, just didn't get it. And of course, that disappointed which caused the mayhem then from last Thursday. So this is the dollar index absolutely just collapsing on that. There was a mirror image in the euro, which will look. But let's just stay with this dollar index for a moment, because we've had this pretty dramatic move up. And technically, it came out of this level. 94 was support. We could see that it's support with hindsight. And when we were down there, we saw that every time the price dropped down to that 94 level, it walloped back up again and it moved sort of it, it, it moved pretty rapidly. Now, we've had a big run up. We, we've had what we can see as a five wave move. We've got a wave one, a wave two, a wave three, a wave four and a five. And the most important thing is that my harmonic software has picked up the fact that the high was a bat level. Now, bat level is a very important harmonic level. It's not a perfect bat pattern, but it's at the level. And it's not that far away from a previous high that we can see quite clearly. Now, the other very important level is that it was at this level of 100. And big round numbers, as we know in the markets, are very emotive. There are, there are areas where people so often will sort of hang their hat and say, right, you know, at 100, we're going to sell or at 100, we're going to buy or we don't want it to go beyond 100 or we don't want to go below 100, etc. So this level was always going to be a fairly important number. But technically, if we just really follow price action, we've got strong momentum on the start of this trend. So the first two waves or the first two impulse waves were exceedingly, exceedingly strong in terms of momentum. And then if we look at this final wave, this fifth wave, it, it's, it's a bit of a damp squib. It just has not really got going. We've got day after day of you know, struggle higher. Oh, let's go back for a deep correction, etc. And so the range of these candles um, sort of becomes relatively small in relation to the previous waves. And that starts to tell the story. So all in all, we've got then a big build up in the COT short position on the euro and consequently the long position in the dollar index. We've then got a chart showing us that we've got a whole series of waves coming up to an important harmonic level at an important emotive level. And it didn't need a great deal to go and burst this little bubble. And burst it, Mario Draghi did. Now, we don't know if he did it on purpose or there are big machinations inside the ECB that he did not get his way within the ECB. He's the man who wanted to do whatever it takes. He was the man who bigged it all up and got us all expecting that there was going to be the big move with more and more and increased amounts of, of QE going on over and above what he already committed to. And it's suggesting that either he has lost uh, the faith, well, I don't know if he did actually have full faith, from the ECB, and uh, you know the, the the various factions within, or indeed this was a move which was created in order to stop the dollar getting ridiculously high. So 
<laughs> we could read all sorts of things into it. And what we've got to be a little bit aware of is that we're now looking at markets beyond charts and beyond just straightforward economic fundamentals. We're, we're looking at it very much from the point of view of, of, of who holds sway in these various in institutions. And it's looking now that perhaps, perhaps, Mario did misfire because on Friday he then comes up with all sorts of things saying, oh, yeah, yeah, but, but we could still do it. We could still do it. And, uh, you know, he was just trying to jawbone it. So I suspect that things are going on certainly between the U.S. Fed and the, uh, and the ECB in order to stop, for the moment, the dollar shooting up higher. Now, the Fed have committed themselves. I, I believe that they have committed themselves to this interest rate rise. Consequently, what we could well find is that whilst that daily uptrend looks now to have been broken, the longer term uptrend is not. So if we look at this weekly chart, yeah, you know, we've got this, this engulfing week, but it could possibly be only temporary. And... If we're looking at this in terms of waves, we don't really want to see price moving much below where it is right now. If we run uh, further out and look at the monthly chart, well, you know, <laughs> what have we got? We've got a neckline at 100. We've got this neckline. Could this be a reverse head and shoulders, we start to ask? Well, it could possibly be. Now, what's going to happen in terms of uh, all sorts of emerging markets who rely on uh, on the dollar to be weak because they have <laughs> borrowed a fantastic amount of money in order to keep their economies afloat and keep moving on. But if this dollar goes higher, it's going to absolutely crush those emerging market market economies, of which there are so many in the world, which, which are going to cause more sorts of problems. But look at where the dollar has been. It's been considerably higher. And if we just consider that this move could run ourselves, whoops, let's not do that. But if we just consider the distance that the dollar has actually traveled, and we start to think, right, well, if that's a neckline, where could it go? It could go substantially higher from here. So we've got to be very cautious about looking at what happened uh, last Thursday as being a sea change. We may not have that sea change. It's entirely possible that the dollar is going to keep on rising. And the monthly chart, the weekly chart, is still suggesting that that could possibly be the case. And if we look at the daily chart right now, then one of the little feature of this, which is all important, is a thing called an inside day. And we had an inside day on Friday. Now, we know what an inside day is. Quite simply, the extent of the trading within the day was well and truly within the extent of the trading on the previous day. So that's definition then of, uh, of that. So we've now actually had an inside day breakout. We could call it an harami breakout. And in candle terms, that can be really quite important. So what one would possibly have expected was for today to be a down day. And if that had been the case, it might have developed into a major move. We could have had then this move down with a downside break, then taking us right the way down to well, the region where this big rally started off in the first place. But today's price action is saying, no, no, it's not going to happen, or at least it's not going to happen yet. It could still happen, but the chances are we're going to see a reasonably substantial recovery. Now, we could still find that we've got an ABC measured move um, will come in from wherever it manages to rally to, and uh, that's exactly what I'm looking to see right now. The rally to extend, and at some point, at some point in the next 
nine days that we've got, we could well find that um, it decides that it's going to turn tail or indeed it is going to wait for the announcement that we have next Wednesday. And uh, in terms of wanting to be very cautious in the markets, next Wednesday at uh, 7 p.m. UK time, um, then I should just be watching with arms folded. I won't want to do anything, but I will most certainly want to see what the market reaction is going to be. It's either going to say, okay, yeah, we told you so, and it'll be a buy the rumor, sell the fact, where there is so much expectation, whatever the quarter percent move, you know, assuming that they do make it, then we could well find that the market says, right, okay, that's a yawn. We, uh, we expected it. And then we get the sell-off. And then we get the sell-off. But I'll tell you what, if there is not actually a rise at all, and Yellen does her usual mealy mouth, uh, well, mm, uh, perhaps the situation's not quite right yet, then what we just may find is that um, the sell-off could be absolutely massive. So we've got to be a little bit cautious on, on bidding up the dollar or indeed bidding it down. But just look out because it's still got the potential to keep on moving higher. So anyway, that's the way that uh, I would actually see this at the moment. Now, one other thing that I think is going to color her uh, position is this. If we just look at this chart, this is the S&P 500. And the S&P 500 has taken last week in its stride. We've got a bat level yet again, a very, very important level. And the important thing here is that the market did not sell off. The market did not sell off. And uh, consequently, they like the idea that perhaps there could be a somewhat weaker dollar. And of course, as far as the Fed are concerned, this appears to be the only market that they're really, really interested in making sure that they preserve. So from that point of view, just looking at this market, the one that they want to keep going higher, it suggests that they're going to, they're going to be very, very um, interested in allowing the market to feel that interest rates maybe are not going to go beyond whatever has been discounted by the market. So if we've got the market not selling off on the, on the assumption and expectation priced in now that there's going to be a quarter percent increase, then the Fed are going to be very, very pleased that the main stock market has not sold off. Right. So there we are. You know, that's uh, that's one way of looking at things. If we just consider what's going on with gold and silver for the moment. By the move last week, it would uh, seem that the gold market has decided, ah, right. OK, so the dollar is not going to go strong. It is not going to get any stronger. It's going to weaken. And all the way through this, my activity index has been suggesting that look at it, the momentum has turned now to the upside. If we run this right the way out, well, it's run out to, to weekly, first of all. We've got, look at this, we've got a very, very interesting weekly engulfing. I've got one of my indicators going bullish, but not the second one. If we look at the monthly, then the monthly, we're still bearish all the way through. We're still very much in, in a downtrend. But looking back over here on the left, gold is, is telling us now that, look, you know, we're at this level where there could well be some support. There is still potential on the downside, of course, but there's also the potential for something of a turn up. So the gold market on the monthly is telling us at the moment that, look, we're still well and truly in the downtrend. We're still expecting higher interest rates. We are still expecting that world trade, the global slowdown, is still globally slowing down. And the weekly, well, it's just hedging its bets at the moment. It's had, rather like the, uh, the, the, the dollar, it's had, actually had a good run on the downside. And uh, we're finding then that the daily, at the moment, has yet to break any significant levels. The first significant level, level it needs to break 
Okay, the first significant level, if it'll do it, is going to be up here. If it can break this level, and looking back left, it's a, it's been support, it's been resistance. If it can break that level, get itself above 1100, then I reckon we could be on for something really quite interesting in terms of a rally. Now, if you're interested in precious metals, which any currency trader most certainly should be, then the one that I've I've always preferred is silver. We get much more bang for the buck. And uh, this one does absolutely move in some tremendous trends. As we have seen with this down move, one of the best trends that I've seen in silver in a, in a long time, we get this, this beautiful little run down. Longer term, longer term, just look at this. This is the monthly chart. And building this in, we're in this area of strong potential support if it dramatically were to give way on the downside as started to look that it just might if it were to give way there's a lot of downside potential but just look at the lows i'm picking that up on the low of a year ago and then we've got this low the august low and then our most recent low this appears to be where the support is. Below this level, you know, we're going to see this running right way on down, and above it, not. Uh, Manoj, no, quite right. Um, good to see you here, by the way. In, in fact, I've been very remiss. I haven't sort of uh, welcomed you guys in today. I mean, so many of, of you guys that I know here, uh, yeah, Richard, Mohammed, Mohammed um, Mark, Owen, Edward, um, and so on. Manoj, no, you're, you're quite right. I've just switched this over to MT4, and indeed my latest course, which is the 20-minute extreme swing trader, which is basically just taking swing trades, um, not necessarily looking intraday at all. Uh, I find that this is a brilliant chart. I've, I've uh, come up with a couple of indicators, which we've, uh, we, which we've done quite a bit of work on, and um, the activity index, etc., runs on MT4, which is, of course, you know, that, uh, that uh, very, very popular charting package. So um, I, I actually find this brilliant for taking a look at the, uh, the longer term perspective. So uh, there we are. Any broker, any broker you like. Um, yeah, there's one specific one that I recommend, but there are a good many out there. You want to, whichever MT4 broker you're going for, you want to make sure that you can get them on the telephone because <laughs> there are there, there there are you know there are brokers and there are brokers you know <laughs> need i say more as it were but you've got to make sure that you can get them on the telephone um and make sure that they are real people that you can speak to in whatever your home language is and they do vary a little bit between brokers the other most annoying thing about them is that they use different time frames so make sure you're you're absolutely clear on what the time frame is that they're they're actually uh, basing it on. Um, and what else can I tell you about MT4? Um, you know, you're a little bit restricted on the certainly intraday. You know, you're you're, you're restricted say to well, that's the, uh, you know a 30 minute chart. If you want a 20 minute chart, you know, sorry mate, you can't have it. Um, yeah, there are various things out there which will allow you to um, build up your charts intraday at uh, various different time frames, but they don't work terribly well. Um, that's the that's the probably the biggest restriction. But for swing trading, I think it's absolutely great. Um, uh, I also use it for intraday, and it's my backup to trade station. So um, I think I think it's it's it's, it's very very worthwhile. But um, no, if you're interested, get hold of the. Uh, the TMEST, it's a, it's a great program and it's been very well accepted by those who've, uh, who've got it so far. So we've, we've got a lot going on. We've got a lot going on. And um, what we've got to be exceedingly careful of, uh, more, more so now, that the markets are getting very, very jittery. We, we've, we're so long into the big, big bull market in stocks. We're so long into the QE experiment. Um, we're finding that we're getting um, junk bond sell-offs, and uh, that that whole area of junk caused very much in well, I say very much 
caused in part by what's going on with uh, the likes of, uh, of crude oil. We'll look at the US dollar um, CAD chart in a moment, which uh, is correlated to this. And we, we've seen these big, big moves. So what's going on with, with oil? Well, it's in a downtrend. <laughs> we know it's in a downtrend. It's been moving on down for a long, long time. And, you know, we, we can sort of read into this what has been going on and why it's been selling off. Uh, one of the main reasons, of course, is that <laughs> the evidence is there that the Western world is just not using the amount of oil that they were. And emerging markets are not using the amount of oil that they were. And consequently, there's a glut of the stuff. There's too much of it out there. You just want to see the number of tankers that there are acting as, uh, as warehouses, as oil warehouses. Uh, uh, sea tankers, that is, and uh, how they all move terribly slowly and, and how world trade. Um, you, should, you should look at the Baltic Dry Index, which is the cost of... Um, of, of hiring ships to uh, move goods from A to B. It's, it's you know, it, it's just bouncing along at the bottom. It's an all-time low. All of these things are telling us that world trade is, 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 is just dropping through the floor. And the oil price then um, has been allowed to collapse on down. That has had a major effect on the um, area of bonds in the exploration sector. And uh, we're, we're you know, finding that uh, we're getting shale companies, we're getting fracking companies who are just throwing in the towel and they're just giving up effectively. They're just giving up and saying that, no, 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 with oil prices this low, we can't survive. That may well have been what the, um, what the Saudis actually wanted to, to um, get some competition taken out of the market. But, of course, uh, as time goes on, we could well find that the oil price, uh, if it stays low for a not long period of time, then the Saudis are going to be in financial trouble themselves. So let's just look at this chart of the USDCAD. It's correlated to the oil price. And this correlation um, you know, effectively means that when the oil price is really, really low, then that's not very good for the Canadian economy. And, of course, the number of... Um, oil producing country, companies compared to the number of oil exploration companies, which is probably um, one of the highest in Canada. And those exploration companies, if they're just throwing in the towel and saying, no, 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 we've had enough. We cannot service the debt. And of course, their bondholders are saying, right, OK, <laughs> we, we want our money back. And, uh, you know, if you've got a bit of old um, equipment lying around, such as what you've been doing to drill these holes, we're just going to sell it off for scrap and at least get some money back on, on our investments. So this is a chart which is indicative of that. We've seen the uh, US dollar against the Canadian dollar rise and rise and rise and rise. Look at this chart. It's been going up and up and up as the, as the oil price has been uh, dropping down. The Canadian dollar has been getting weaker and weaker and weaker against an ever stronger US dollar. So you get the double whammy effect of a strong dollar and an incredibly weak Canadian because of the oil price. And it has been a one-way bet. At the moment, it's a little bit uncertain. Uh, last week, we had a little OPEC meeting and there was an expectation that they would um, start to curb oil supplies. But no, it didn't actually happen. And so this chart, it's, it's been a bullish chart again today. So a great correlation play. And uh, we've now got this little bit of a breakout. And the key thing is, will it actually break above then the September highs? So everything is connected in this world. And in these markets, then this is really, really, really important times. All oh, right, custom indicator. Yeah, it's um, it's based on um, a lot of the work done by, well, amongst others, um, Larry Pesavento, Scott Carney, etc. But it's an automatic fib find. Now I use it on on uh, on on a good many charts. In fact, the silver chart that we showed and the gold chart, I actually run it on here. It works on any, any time frame. And it's all part of my harmonic wave trader package, which brings in a little bit of Elliott wave, measured moves, etc. 
and uh, I find it invaluable for picking out these turning points. Look at this, you get a, get a, get a 50% turning point, you get a 127, you, you get, a, get a butterfly level, and, and what happens? Price turns round. You know, we, we get a 161.8. That number is all important. It has made <laughs> billions for the likes of um, Paul T- Tudor Jones. Sure enough, it's picked out this potential turning point, and uh, it, it's, it's not just the guard pattern it's uh it, it's the important thing <clears throat> let me tell you this um that the way that i look at using harmonics is that people get very very um they get hot under the collar about being purists about things and um it's something i, I try to avoid they, they want to see the pattern it's got to be a perfect pattern and so often we do not find perfect patterns but what we do tend to find increasingly is that we get some really good patterns that produce some really good fibonacci levels and it is not so much the pattern it is more the fibonacci level that uh, we, the, we 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 can actually see now i just want to show you this one other chart this is the us dollar against the swiss franc now you may remember, <laughs> you may remember that if we go back a bit, <clears throat> there was a bit of a move in the um, in the Swiss at the start of this year. Just a just a modest move. It managed to bankrupt a lot of traders and a lot of brokers. When out of the blue, the Swiss said, "Ah, <laughs> everything that we told you about how we are going to um, keep the Swiss um, weak, particularly against the." Um, the euro, everything we've told you. Ah, oh, no, no, no. We, we changed our mind on on Sunday night and on Monday. Crash, it, it wallop. We've since then had a major recovery, and look at that. It's gone to a new high. It's gone to a new high. And that has given us excellent. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of people have breathed a sigh of relief over that. Yeah, they managed to get themselves recapitalized. So, um, yeah, and, and interesting out there, there were a number of brokers who, who came out, the better capitalized ones, actually came out at the time and said, no, we're going to do the decent thing. We're actually going to, we're going to, we're going to eat your losses. We're, we're, we're going to absorb your losses of, of their traders. And uh, there were a number of brokers who did actually uh, do the decent thing and uh, kept people in the game. Because the last thing that, a broker who's well capitalized wants to do. They don't want to lose thousands of customers. They want to keep their customers. And if it means taking a temporary hit, as a good many did, they stay in the game. Anyway, there we are. So we do get these massive, massive moves. And this, of course, runs as a mirror image to the euro. The uptrend on this one has been so much better than the euro's downtrend. To, to trade. We're now then at this really important inflection point, and for me, the important level is this low. Okay, it's this low. This is a support resistance level. It's vitally important. If this one goes, then that's it for the US dollar, as far as I'm concerned. On down it will go. And I trade this, if I want to trade the US dollar, this is the one that I, I tend to trade more than anything else. It's the USD Swiss. It's really come back into its own, and uh, you know there was a time when uh, when when it, it wasn't doing it at all well. Now, the other one I just want to mention is the uh, is the JAPI because the US dollar JPY. This is where QE started. This is the sort of the home of QE, if you like, where the Japanese effectively went through the motions of uh, of. of of doing everything that they possibly could to weaken their currency. And of course it worked, going right the way back to uh, 2012, 13, end of 2012, 13, we've actually seen this inexorable rise. It hasn't, hasn't doubled, not yet, I suppose it could still happen, and we, we, but we've had this really, really big move on up. And one wonders if it is going to continue, because I think the, the world now is becoming QE weary. They're realizing that uh, the Keynesian idea of unsound money just cannot go on forevermore. And the likes of the Fed, the Japanese, 
to a very great extent, they've just boxed themselves into a corner and they're really stuck with the belief that the policy they've been following is the only policy that they can possibly follow. And uh, in order to try and unwind and, uh, and about face, which could be happening, it could be going through right now as we speak with what was happening on last Thursday, what may well or may not happen next Wednesday, I think we're finding that we've got world weariness with, with QE and they, they want to try and get themselves out of the situation. So why am I saying that? Well, there's been a great expectation that we're going to see much, much higher levels on the US dollar against Japanese yen. And the market is not really telling us that. Yeah, we've had another little breakout this morning. But look at this pattern. Overall, this has now been, been, been running for a few weeks. We, we had a previous breakout. And this pattern needs to follow through. We need to get a breakout on the upside. And we are not getting it yet. We had this previous breakout. And look at where it is. In relation to this previous high, it's now suggesting that perhaps, just perhaps, it wants to come right the way back into this trading range. Either could happen, and I think we've got to wait now until next Wednesday to see that follow through um, or not. And uh, the or not is starting to look increasingly likely. Now, there are plenty of charts that we want to look at, but um, we're going to run out of time. And so let's just take a little glance now um, at the Euro GBP, which is something that has come into its own in trading terms. Um, it's been a pretty ghastly market to trade in previous years, but it's come into its own again. Now, I've just put this one on, this chart on, because we've got some really, really sort of interesting stuff that we're looking at here. Because over a period of time, we've seen then the euro selling off. If we run this... Um, I wonder if I can get all the data on just to sort of, yeah, yeah, there we go. That's it. We can actually see that going right the way back to 2000, you know, there it was. It was down there at 0.6. Okay. And what that has meant is that people have been assuming it's going to get back down there. But no, there it is. It's come down to this level and it's found some support. It's found some support. Now, this support level, if we then do a little bit of a FIBO look on it, there we go. This has come right the way back down to that all-important 88.67, that back level in that support region. We can actually look at this and we can see that we've got a whole series of waves running on down. And so we're in this consolidation area. Now, work back on the time frames where we've got a weekly. And look at this. Is this a potential reverse head and shoulders? Well, yeah, it is. You know, there's a possibility. There's a possibility that if it can get back up through this level, 70, uh, 74, 80, 75, if it can get back above there, then it's going to put an attack on the next resistance area, which is there at about 78. It has not broken down yet. It might still break down, but it's going to be a very, very interesting one for certainly longer term watchers. If we come now down to back to the daily, we can see that we've actually had a signal down here. So we've traded it on the downside. We're now trading it on the upside. OK, it's got a little bit in front of itself now as a result of uh, last week. But look how this move started off before last Thursday, before last Thursday. So we got a signal there around about 70.50. It's produced, you know, 100 plus pips. One wonders, could there be more to go? Well, they just might be. They just might be. So at the moment, I'm looking for this to maybe consolidate and come back somewhat further before there's a possibility that we might get another run on higher. Right. OK, guys, well, the little roundup that we've had we're sort of running out of time here um the you you can actually actually yeah to answer your question you can actually you can download various versions from various places and unfortunately most of the free ones are, 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 are well they're, they're not very good to be quite honest but um 
what you can do, you can spend not a great deal of money. You can join my traders class group, and then you can get the Harmonic Wave trade the package and you can get it for a very reasonable modest amount of money that's that's one way of, of getting a hold of this stuff now um there was one other that um i did want to take a little bit of a look at and uh which escapes me for the moment bear with me i think i must have just gone past it There are two others in actual fact. Let's first of all go to the Euro AUD. <clears throat> <laughs> Absolutely, Ben. I, I quite agree with you. You know, you, you just you just wait and wait and wait and wait, and then you get the wrong answer coming out of them. Anyway, Euro AUD. What a fantastic market. This one moves like crazy. Intraday trading, uh, longer term trading. Sprint. Look at this. It's picked up the Gartley level. It's picked up the Gartley level at a round number. And, and markets respond to round numbers. If we also pop a line across where this is, look at that. If ever this was a support resistance line, this is it. This is it, support resistance line. We've got a very clear Elliott wave move oh, running right the way down to this low. We've now had, and, and this, is, this is how trend changes go. This is how they go. First of all, First of all, you get some evidence that there could be some support here. Well, we've got two bits of evidence. We've got Fibonacci, and we've just got a straightforward support resistance line at a round number. And, of course, there's been a big, long decline. And after any big move, there are going to be a lot of traders who have either done extremely well out of it and are ready to take profits, or there are those who are waiting for the best entry. So you get these these areas. Now, the first thing to happen, you put a downtrend line in and you find that the trend line breaks. Then after that, you tend to get something of a correction coming on back down. And then it'll form a higher low. Now, we don't know where that's going to be. So we've got to wait for it. and We wait for it to form the right sort of pattern, the right sort of bottom. Then... That's the time to get in. That's the time to get in. If we're too quick, we can very often get our fingers burned. But if we can wait and just sit on our hands and, and do nothing for a while and just wait for things to unfold, we can then very often get in on the start of a major trend. Now, I don't know if this is going to turn into a major trend change or not. I'm not that clever. But what I do know is that the evidence is starting to mount to suggest that we just might be, we just might be getting to that point. And uh, so that was that one, which I thought was quite an interesting one just to uh, just to keep in mind. And let's just go to the Australian for a moment because I've not mentioned too much about the Australian. The Australian economy, of course, has been news driven by China. And we're constantly told that it's the China factory, the fact factor, not factory, China factories, which are probably not doing terribly well. And uh, every time there has been a bit of a hiccup in China, or at least the numbers have been coming through, then, of course, their major um, partner in terms of aggregates, etc., has been the Australians, who've taken a bit of a tumble. And consequently, we've had these big, big, big moves on down, and we need to sort of run out a little bit further so that we can see the extent of these things. And just, well, look at this. You, you know what I'm going to say. Just look at this chart. Is it ready or is it not ready? Well, we, we've got a little bit like that year IUD. We've got this big, big move down that we've seen, massive move down. But it's picking up support at a round number, at the at the Gartley level. And could it be ready to turn? Well, it just might be. It just might be. So is the downside limited? Mm, maybe, possibly, at the moment. And on the weekly, we've still got this downtrend. It, it hasn't broken yet, the downtrend. 
but it might, it just might. And we're starting to get some evidence that just recently, just recently, look at this, we've got a Gartley within a Gartley. We've now got this pattern that has come down to this important level at that 70 region, and it's looking interesting. At the moment, we're in a sideways move, but at some point, it's going to move out of here. Now, we don't know which way it's going to go. And I guess that to some extent, China is the key. But a lot of that, most of that, is all priced in the market. So at some point, we're going to see a decent breakout here. So I've given you at least two markets, which I think have got tremendous potential to move here. And so they're both AUD um, related. One is the Euro AUD, and uh, the other one is this AUD USD. So there you are, guys. I'm going to leave you to it right now. And uh, thanks for being with me. Thanks for uh, being so attentive and, uh, and your questions. Um, and hope to be with you again um, yeah, in the new year. So uh, probably the first, second week um, in the new year. Let's see how things have panned out. And the most important thing, folks, be exceedingly cautious next Wednesday when uh, the, uh, the Fed funds rate is either going to move or it's not going to move. Bye for now.